Home Life and Style is brought to you by the Pine Hills, offering inspired new homes and daily adventures just 45 minutes from Boston. Ethan Allen, every detail matters. Longfellow Design Build, architect and builder for Cape Cod and beyond. Snow and Jones, a fixture in New England homes since 1952. And by Classic Tile and Stone, your tile and stone destination. Hi, I'm Parker Kelly. Welcome to Home Life and Style. I am passionate about design, food, and travel. I love discovering new places, meeting new people, and sharing who they are, how they live, and what they love. In each episode, I'll introduce you to a new destination through the eyes of the people who call it home. Join me as we celebrate these towns, these people, these homes in style. Today I'm on my way to Oak Bluffs on the northeast shore of the island of Martha's Vineyard. I'm taking a car ferry from Woods Hole directly into the terminal in Oak Bluffs. Though only about 5,000 people live here year-round, Oak Bluffs is best known as a bustling summer tourist destination with a long African-American history. In Oak Bluffs, there are a variety of things to do and see, from sunbathing and swimming at Inkwell Beach, golfing at Farm Neck Golf Club, or just taking in a quiet moment at Ocean Park. Oak Bluffs has it all. I'm headed to meet homeowners April and Calvin in a part of Oak Bluffs called East Chop, a breathtakingly beautiful headland overlooking Vineyard Sound, and it's the highest protruding bluff on the island. East Chop once hosted a telegraph tower to let those on the mainland know of arriving ships. I'm meeting April and Calvin and their three kids, Carmen, Kaylin, and Calvin III, at their vacation home they call Pirate's Reef, a five bedroom, 3,800 square foot, modern Cape Colonial. One of the things they love about this home is the location, giving them tranquility and privacy, and yet is only a short walk to downtown Oak Bluffs. The couple met in college during their freshman year at Hampton University. April is originally from Clifton, Virginia, and Calvin is originally from Savannah, Georgia. April is a homemaker and does administrative work on the couple's businesses and investments. Calvin is a general partner in a venture capital firm and also VP for a medical media company. The family lives in New Jersey, and when they're not there, you can find them here on the vineyard. I'm going to meet these homeowners, get a personal tour of their home, including Calvin's special twist on a traditional wine cellar explore Oak Bluffs, and then they're turning their kitchen over to one of their favorite island chefs and me, and we're going to celebrate home life and style in East Chop. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. welcome. door opener. Hi there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Parker, hi. Good to see you. Mm, How are Calvin, you? nice to see you and meet your family finally. Yes. Hi there. I'm Parker. Hi, Kaylin. How are you? Hi, Hi April. Oh, so nice to see you. Thank you for coming in. Welcome to East Job. Thank you. This is lovely. Very nice. So this is where I'm going to be cooking with Chef Gavin. Yes, yeah, Chef Gavin. I'm He's, very excited for that. Yeah, yeah we are. excited as well. Yep, Chef Gavin's been a, a chef for us for a while now. We have dinner parties here and we can have a lot of room with the big island for entertaining and display. And uh, Chef Gavin comes in and does a great job. Is your home in Allentown like this too in terms no, of the decor? very traditional. We went here, like, you know, saw the floors and it just reminded me of sand. I was like, how about, you know, beach and clean lines? Yeah, so you definitely have it intuitively. I've gone to a lot of um, homes where they have beautiful wine cellars, but you have something a little bit different, which I thought was interesting. And so this this right here gives me a tiny hint of what I may see in the in the in the room that I've yet to see <laughs> that you told me about on the phone. Uh, downstairs, we kind of put a spin on the wine cellar and created a, a scotch whiskey vault. We actually plan probably some type of event, if not almost every other night. There's, you know, either we're going here or we'd be invited somewhere else. But when we're here, we have everything we need to host a, you know, pretty, pretty decent sized dinner party. Yeah. Yeah, normally when guests come in, we have a seat, you know, kind of catch up. 
April and I do a lot of reading in mm -hmm. here. Oh yeah, what Listen kind of to things music. do you like to read? Um, I, you know, I read a lot about the island. Uh, you see here we have two books here uh, okay. that are about uh, the African American history here, and uh, one is actually uh, written by Richard Taylor, who uh, who's our neighbor right down the street. And that's the gentleman I'm going to meet. Yeah. And so yeah, I see you have a nautical theme here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just just kind of bringing the beach feel, because mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, it's, it's to us, it's it's our summer beach home. So you're coming into the basement. Mm -hmm. It's more of a man cave meets <laughs> entertainment floor. All right. Um, we've tried to give it enough space so we can get a lot of people down here and have mingling and have some, you know, cocktail parties. Uh, we've got it so we can sit up for, you know, movie night with the family if it's raining. And I can see it's a man cave that you're sharing with family I and am. other people. I am. So it's, <laughs> it's a it's a family cave. We'll call it that. <laughs> So Parker, yeah. I like to I like to open the door and show you what's behind uh, the <laughs> frosted door here. I would love to All see right, that. All right, here we go. So this is center stage right here. Yeah, this is it. Oh, wow. This is the collection. A lot of my friends have traveled and tried whiskeys from you know different countries, and you know we'll we'll come back and kind of talk and compare. And um, yeah, it, it's been fun because I mean each 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 bottle has a story, right? So when uh, my son was born, mm -hmm. um, a good Trey. friend of mine, Trey, yeah, uh, Calvin, Calvin the, Calvin the third, we call him Trey. So a good friend of mine from uh, Richmond, Virginia, uh, sent me up this large bottle of Johnny Walker Blue in this kind of coffin-like <laughs> display case, and it was just like the coolest gift. Yeah. So I'm not gonna open that until Trey is of age to drink. So wow. it's going to be one of those ones that gets to be here for 21 years. You know, many of these bottles have that kind of story. I mean, going back to my first job and some um, I brought from my father's collection. Uh, so it's got a lot of history here. But, um, you know, most of it is for me to enjoy with my friends and the community up here. So we do scotch tastings at the wet bar and, uh, you know, we really stay up late and just kind of talk about business, life and, and everything else that comes with it. Yeah. It's funny, you know, a lot of times they say men don't really have those kind of like life talks. Mm -hmm. but we do. They do. Especially yeah. over scotch. This is the downstairs master, so Calvin and I sleep here. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is nice. This is a beautiful color. Thank you, thank you. This is really yeah, pretty. Yeah, for spring and summer, try to do light colors and add a little pop of color yeah. so the walls are bare. So this is kind of your oasis away from the... Yeah, <laughs> the kids are upstairs and we can come in here and... <laughs> so we have an upstairs master as well, but we always, you know, stay down here and then let them kind of roam. It's a really beautiful home. Thank and you. obviously, you have, I mean, you have impeccable taste. Your, oh, your clothing, you. your kids' clothing is really, um, just really, really dapper, really pretty. Very <laughs> thank you. Thank handsome you. family, as you say, right? Thank you. So we have a master bedroom on this floor, and then here is, um, we use it as a playroom for the kids, but also could be a living room. It has its own bathroom. Oh, nice. So we let them play and yeah, lounge How many here. square feet in the home, do you know? Um, I think now that the basement's finished, I think over 5,000. Yeah. And this room has queen and twin, and again, just more than Mary and my girls, you know, either they'll sleep in here together or one by themselves. And sometimes my girls will sleep in here, sometimes they'll sleep in separate rooms. So mm -hmm. we've got a full and twin, and there's a Jack and Jill bathroom and leads into the other room. So my, you know, sister comes up, my niece comes up, so just room for everybody to... Enough beach for everybody. Yes. Joy to share with you in my arms. Just a little hug every day will solve your problems. I got love to share with you in my pocket. Just a little kiss on the lips and we'll skyrocket. We go. You've worked long and hard, built a career, a life, knowing that one day, with a little luck, you'll have time. At Longfellow Design Build, we design and build new homes, new kitchens, new additions to your home. We handle everything 
From conception to completion, working in unison with you, for you, so you can have the home you envision, so you can have the home you deserve, so you can focus on what's important. Longfellow Design Build, architect and builder for Cape Cod and beyond. Before we headed into town to check out the sites, April and Calvin invited their neighbor, Richard Taylor, to stop by and talk about his book. Calvin and April have been completely inspired by your book. Yes. Tell me how you started this book. My family has been coming to the vineyard now oh, about almost 40 years. And I was always intrigued by the very sophisticated and organized large African-American community here. But I never felt uh, that I read or understood how it evolved and developed. The community here in some, in many ways, was being mischaracterized. Uh, the service class and the entrepreneurial class were the ones who laid the foundation and a significant number of women uh, laid and built upon that foundation. Uh, and so neither of those stories had been told, but that wasn't quite the answer. Uh, the Mayu family on this island 300 years ago, they would not allow anyone to buy land from natives here, the Wampanoags, without their approval. So you didn't have the rampant robbery of Native Americans as you did get on the mainland. Secondly, there was a religious community. And so there was a certain amount of tolerance there. So all of that helped to create a tolerant environment. The uh, primary uh, property owners then brought blacks here to be cooks, maids, clean, and they started opening up businesses. And they allowed them to buy property. So you had uh, Charles and Henry at a Shera who came here and they opened up Shera Cottage. At the Shera Cottage, there was more going on. A gentleman by the name of Harry Burley, who ended up being the father of Negro Spirituals, summered in that cottage from 1917 to 1941. And he, uh, he brought Adam Clayton Powell Sr., Paul Robeson, Ethel Waters, and so many others to come and enjoy. So, the 1920s, 1930s, this was the nucleus of the African-American community back in those days. And in 1948, Ebony Magazine, which at that time was the national vehicle for news and information, did a story on uh, African-American resorts. And this was kind of crowned as the top place. And that's how this whole thing mushroomed. And so uh, the, the trail, we were going to go to some of the yes. spots. Tell me what you learned when you were there. Well, Cheryl Cottage we talked about, and we would also stop by Congressman Powell's uh, cottage, the Bunny Cottage. Powell was an amazing figure, and a lot of bills through, and what he was ensured is that the bills that had funding included communities of color across the country. We would also see the cottage of the Harlem Renaissance, uh, Dorothy West, uh, such a brilliant writer, and who wrote The Living is Easy. Okay, so if somebody wants to find your book. The book is sold on Amazon and at the Harvard Bookstore. Very cool. It's been great to talk to you. Likewise. All, right. All the best. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Great. Shortly after my chat with Richard, some of Calvin and April's family came over to take the walk down to Circuit Ave with us. We walked past the harbor and Oak Bluffs Marina, the largest marina on the island. It's a great place to tie up for the day and experience this town. Our first stop was the Flying Horses Carousel, the oldest operating platform carousel in America. It is a popular spot, and so it's often crowded, but worth it. There are only a handful of carousels that still provide the thrill of trying to win the brass ring. This was my first time trying, and even though none of us won this time, we had a backup plan. Ice cream at Ben and Bill's, the family's favorite. Calvin's brother had a distinct ordering method. I'm gonna stick with the pie and cake theme. Okay, do so you I always do it thematically? No, I, I do have a system. Okay. Right? If I start with one flavor, it usually leads me into the next two. That's interesting. So yes. where do you think I should start? I think you should start with the lobster okay. flavor ice cream. <laughs> no, I'm not saying. At least try it, right? <laughs> no. I'll try it with you. All right, that's a deal. Cheers. Okay, cheers. Okay, here we go. We 
weren't done yet, we headed over to the arcade to let the kids burn up some of that sugar. in downtown Oak Bluffs in the height of summer, and I could see why they love being near all of the action, and also why they love their place of peace and quiet up there on East John. When visiting Oak Bluffs, you can wander off the main streets and soon find yourself in what looks like a fairy tale village, the campgrounds, or the Martha's Vineyard Camp Meeting Association. 34 acres in the heart of Oak Bluffs, where the iconic tabernacle and renowned candy-colored gingerbread houses are located. And its religious and historic roots are quite humble and date back to the early 1800s. Methodists held their summer retreats here. There were originally 500 of these Victorian sweethearts, and the area was known as Cottage City, but was renamed Oak Bluffs in 1880. There are now around 300 of them. At the entrance to this charming village, there is the Cottage Museum where you can learn more history. The gingerbread cottages are a must see. about the fixtures. Snow and Jones, the family-owned business that contractors and homeowners on the South Shore and Cape Cod have depended on since 1952. The overall aesthetic of the Pine Hills has a quality that's, that's very high. I mean, when you first started walking the the, the grounds, the landscaping, you said it has to be spectacular because the, the land is spectacular. Well, the, the land is spectacular and it, it starts with trying to see where the land is telling us to build. Uh, we are crafting the right location for, for the home to sit and to view that woods or water or uh, mm -hmm. a beautiful tree or the horizon or even the ocean. And our job is to try and utilize the grade and the trees to create that kind of privacy so that as one moves from neighborhood to neighborhood and sometimes even from home to home, that there are these pieces of nature that frame your view or change the way in which you perceive the homes that you're seeing. I've worked with Christian and Julie for about seven years now, about 30 projects. They care as much as I do about the finished product. And every time I walk in, I'm always like, girls, what do we have new? And they always have things set aside to show me. And it's, every time I go there, it's so exciting. They text me pictures as soon as tile comes in that they think is really exciting. Like, on, even on a Saturday, I'll get a text. And they'll know that I'm just as excited to see it as they are to share it. And so they're, they're my go-to. Recognized and respected. Classic tile and stone on Boston's South Shore. The next morning, I headed down Seaview Avenue the road that connects Oak Bluffs to Egertown, the road that also leads to the bridge, the American Legion Memorial Bridge, also known as the Jaws Bridge, named after the 1975 Steven Spielberg movie, Jaws. Since the movie was made, jumping off of this infamous bridge is kind of a summertime rite of passage, even though there are signs that clearly say no jumping. It's a fun place to hang out, even if you're not a thrill-seeking rebel. There's plenty of good people watching, and this whole area along the barrier beach is a great place to bike, kayak, and take in the summer scenery. This wooden two-lane inlet bridge runs between Nantucket Sound and Senjikantakit Pond, a 750-acre brackish lagoon. It's about two and a half miles in length. About half of the pond consists of flats and sandbars, which can be used for commercial and recreational shell fishing, and that's exactly what I'm planning on doing. I'm going to meet Gavin Smith of Food Minded Fellow. Gavin is a private chef on the island, and Gavin and I are hooking up with fisherman David Berube. Once I find a little patch of them, kind of do maybe a, like a fan pattern, 
and if it leads you in a certain direction where they're thicker, you kind of go like that. basically three different sizes that you sell. Dinner. <laughs> Dinner. With a bucket load of clams, Gavin and I thanked David and parted ways for now. I was going to change up and head back to April and Calvin's for the rest of the summer celebration. Hi! Hi Parker, how are you? I'm well. We can't wait to show you our space planning on our 3D floor planner. So a lot of our clients will come in with pictures of inspiration they may have found from books, magazines, or even our website. So this is a dining room that an actual client brought in this picture and we built it based on her room dimensions and the pieces of furniture they liked in our showroom after sitting on them and viewing them. So this 3D floor planner really brings the room to life for our clients so they can really get a vision of what the end result is going to be for them. This room is stunning. So this is basically where we take it. Once we do the floor plans, we gather the information, it's inspiration to installation. It's complimentary and it's a one-stop shop. Looking for more inspiration? You can find it in the pages of South Shore Home Life and Style. Beautiful imagery and thoughtfully curated stories showcasing fine home design and decor, top area restaurants, boutiques, arts, culture, and more. It's the Lifestyle Magazine celebrating the seaside communities south of Boston. Join seasoned editor Maria Allen and her talented team as they reveal the many reasons this region is such a special place to live, work, and visit. Available on newsstands now. To subscribe, visit SouthShoreHomeLifeAndStyle.com. Gavin. Parker, how are you? What a day we had. Beautiful day. Oh my gosh. You remember Gavin, food-minded fellow. So tell us what you're going to do. What we're going to do is we're going to use these beautiful clams to make a linguine. So we're going to gently place these clams into the pot. And we don't want to drop them in too hard because then you'll crack the shell. Exactly. And because we're going to use the juice that's left in there as our sauce, we don't want to use pieces of shell in our sauce. Now over here, um, we're making a bourbon honey and mustard glaze. So now that our bourbon has reduced and there's no more alcohol left, we're gonna put it into our honey and mustard. So we're just gonna stir oh, yeah. about half of this in there. Okay. You can go ahead and give that a stir. So this will be a glaze. So it's fine that it's a little thicker. We're gonna put it on. It's gonna crisp up the skin just a little bit and add some nice sweetness and smoky flavor. Yeah. Now that our clams have opened, oh, look at we are going to remove these. Oh, as you can see, we've got about four times the liquid we had yes. when we first started. So a lot of that is the liquid from inside these clams, which has got a lot of seawater, it's got that nice clam flavor, and what we're going to do is just let that reduce. So what I'm going to do at this stage is put the pasta in the water, and that eight to ten minutes that allows the pasta to cook, we'll let this reduce, and then we can introduce those clams back into the beautiful sauce. Right. So it's all about timing. Is what it's you're all saying. about timing. The bottom line is it's all about timing. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna revisit that bourbon, honey, and mustard glaze that we made earlier. Right. These are about 90% cooked, and we're gonna throw that into a 400 degree oven to allow that sugar to really caramelize on the outside. Okay. And that'll continue to cook just that last 10% and give us that nice caramelized outside, which is gonna be a beautiful, beautiful thing. 
I can see what you're saying now. Oh, look at that. See that. Oh, so you can yeah. see that layer mm -hmm. on top. It's nice a little shiny. Oh, they smell so good. That is perfect. And look how juicy and tender those look. Now I see why they have you come over to the house. From time to time. Now I see why you come back over. The guests started to arrive. TJ Douglas, the owner of the Urban Grape, is not only well versed in wine, but he has a vast knowledge of distilled spirits, which came in handy given Calvin's large Scotch vault. With TJ on site, the party moved downstairs for a tasting before dinner. Just like with wine, we're gonna taste in a progressive format, okay? So we're gonna taste from the lightest bodied whiskey uh, up to the fullest bodied whiskey. So we're gonna go over to Scotland and this guy, John Glazer, an American whose job was blending all of the Johnny Walker Blue for about a decade. After he left making Johnny Walker Blue, he ended up making Compass Box. This is his one whiskey that he does not put tasting notes on because he wants everyone to come up with their own phenomenology. So Calvin broke out his special whiskey glasses and this little lip right here, what it does, it forces the liquid in the glass to jump over the front of your lip, over your teeth, over the front of your tongue, and the liquid hits the middle of your palate. And what that means is that you get more flavor and less burn. So I, I, I was tasting kind of like a woodiness. This definitely has, definitely has wood in it. No question, great, yep. great observation. Yep. So what happens, well, you know. <laughs> I'm a pro. Johnny they Walker Blue, thank you so much, Calvin, for opening this up. And Johnny Walker Blue really shows the entire uh, spectrum of Scotch whiskey. It has the sweet notes, it has the caramel notes, it has the salty salinity notes, it has the citrus notes, and then it finishes with very soft smoke. Cheers. 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 That's a treat. Yeah, this is a treat. Thank you. Thank you. Glad I could share this with friends. After our tasting and all that information, we joined the rest of the group for dinner. The feast Beautiful. is ready. So we've put this feast together. I think it's time to get these uh, guests in here and give them a little food. Yeah. Dinner's ready. Let's eat. Let's eat. Parker and I went out this morning and did a little hard work for all of you folks. We went out and raked up those clams that are on that plate right there. So we've got a clam linguine with a little spinach and tomatoes. The salad is mostly local. We also have some chicken thighs with a little bit of a mustard, honey, and bourbon glaze. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank Please you. Please enjoy, folks. Thank you, Chef. With these beautiful dishes that Chef Gavin has prepared for all of you tonight, um, I decided to bring a couple wines. Yeah. We're going to start with a, a Riesling from a really wonderful Indian gentleman, um, which is really rare in the wine business. And then we're going to move into uh, one of my favorite producers, a guy named Andre Houston Mack. It's rare. He's actually one of the few African-American wine makers and winery owners in the US. And this is uh, OPP, so this is Other People's Peanut. Calvin and April, thank you guys for opening up your home. It has been absolutely beautiful. And thank you for introducing me to your friends. Also beautiful. You, Chef, Gavin, you did an amazing job. This was delicious. Can everyone agree how delicious it was? Absolutely. 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 And TJ, the wine, of course, always impeccable. And the community here in East Chop, the neighborhood, the sense of the sense of belonging here, the history that's here, has just been amazing. So that is home life and style from East Chop. Until next week, I'm Parker Kelly. Cheers. 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 Cheers.